Welcome to another episode of Box Ninja Program, all about unboxing done by Ninja. Actually, technically not real Ninja. And in this episode, the actual product is unboxed already, so there's no unboxing, so maybe we should call this episode. This is going to be my last Photokina related episode. As you can see, look, that's the, the, the halls right there, and the Fujifilm stand, and the Canon stand over, over there, and the Nikon stand over there. No, 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 not really. I'm back home, but this is a Photokina related episode because I got this when I went to the Kippon stand. That's my kind of color of lens. Actually, no, because I don't work for Digital Wear anymore. You heard about this before? I, I have, yes. I'm just checking out that aperture 40 millimeter. F 0.85. What mount is this? Sorry. What mount is it? What? <laughs> Sorry, for, your English accent is bad. Uh, what? What camera is it for? What camera? For Fuji? For Sony? Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's it's cr process, so it's crop only or yeah, yeah, yeah. For, okay. APS-C. Right. Okay. Why? Why pink? Why pink? Yeah. It's this kind of a marketing. Love that honesty. Pink is the new black. Leica, Leica they have. So you can do you can do your street photography and have your red end in people's faces. Yeah. You know, just your bright, the, your bright red end. Just the, just the tip. It's it's all tip. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 for the that's the kip on for Leica. And uh, my English accent's a bit dodgy as well, so <laughs> too hard to understand. You have interest in to make a review? For oh, yes. Uh, what camera, camera you prefer? Fuji is better. We prefer yeah, which lens mount would you like? Any lens mount, we've got so we've got. No, 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 you can take Fuji mount, okay? Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll be a great magician. Take any card, pick any card. Any card you like, any card, as long as the bloody Ace of Spades, goddammit. Pink or. Black? Oh, I love the pink one, yeah. He's just gone in the back. He just asked me what colour do I like. I just said pink, so he's, he's gone to the back to, to find me a, a pink one. This is Fuji. This is this is for Fuji. Great. The performance on Fuji is better than on Sony. <laughs> I don't know why. So there we. Oh my God, that's 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 got some weight to it. <laughs> F zero point eight five. That's crazy. It's not F one. It's not even F zero point nine five. F zero eight five. That's nuts. The aperture is so big, it's got light literally shining out of it right now. It might actually help if you take the lens cap off first though. Should yeah. I have the cap off? Take the cap off. Look at that beast. Yes, yeah, so a super lovely guy, even though he probably didn't understand a word that I was saying. He lent me this lens to make a video about it, and here it is. And he's probably never going to get his lens back, but, you know, I feel kind of bad for him. Nobody was at his stand, and they make great adapters, and they make lenses as well. Yeah, so I felt kind of sympathetic for him, but that's not going to stop me from being really mean about the lens if I feel it's really bad. Anyway, let's put that aside, and let's pick up this lens and stop making plosives straight into the mic. All right, so here it is. Ooh, I like that sound. It's just like a gun, some, something gun-related. I, I don't play with guns, but I'm sure that does sound very gun-like. I mean, I don't actually know if lens caps should really make this noise. I mean, imagine this. Every time you take lens cap off, you have to do this. Oh, I'm taking pictures of some wildlife. Oh, I don't want to distract them. So, yeah, that's the lens cap. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you again. <laughs> okay, so that's a very nice lens cap. And it comes in pink. Okay, thank you very much. The rest of the lens comes in pink as well. I, I, I wouldn't even call it pink. It's kind of a metallic rose. Not, not quite rose gold. Rose gold? No, Dave. It's just not rose gold, all right? I don't know what kind of gold you've been getting. Possibly some cheap stuff, but this is not rose gold. It's, it's just rose. Metallic rose. Oh. Well, it doesn't actually say what the filter thread size is. I reckon, um, well, it's only one way to find out. 67 millimeter filter thread. Okay, it's got a concave front element. It's, it's a bit like a Leica. Whoa, what a front element, by the way. It is a hefty bit of glass. It's, it's all glass. Well, obviously it's glass inside. <laughs> what do you think is made out of paper? A paper lens. No, it's all glass. And metal, all, all metal body. Uh, this, this is what this is what we used to do at Red Bull for to test if it's a metal gun, a metal plastic gun. It's what? <laughs> a metal plastic gun. That makes sense. Well done, Kai. Give yourself an award. No, a metal toy gun. Yeah. Okay. I used to play with toy guns at Red Bull Fair stuff, but we used to check. 
We used to check if it's metal by doing that, putting it to our face. Is it cold? That's the metal test. Yes, it's metal. It's all metal. But anyway, it's a heavy lens. It really is. It's chunky. It's massive. So this is probably going to throw the balance off of any of your mirrorless cameras manufactured by Shanghai Transvision China. That's my cat trying to get out. You know, that's, it's funny, cats. When you lock them out, they want to come back in. When you lock them in, they want to get out. It's like, ugh. what's wrong with you? Sorry. Jeez. Okay, anyway, so yeah, designed in Germany, manufactured in China. It's Mark II. I don't know what the difference is between Mark II and Mark I. Probably not too much. Probably the fact that this comes in rows and the first one doesn't. But who cares? This is Mark II anyway, so therefore it must be better, right? The finishing is... It's not bad. It, it feels good. It's not. It's not roughly. It's not crudely finished. The focus ring is smooth. It, it goes. From, I think. It, I believe it's 170 degrees from one end to the other. And close focus is 0.75. So that's 75 centimeters. Ooh, that's nice. Clicky aperture. Can you de-click it? No, you cannot. It's all clicky. Clickety clickety. But when I first got this, I thought, okay, I've got to put things into perspective. This is a Chinese-made lens. It's probably been cheap. I can't evaluate this and compare this to, say, a Leica 15mm Noctilux because that is super expensive. That is on another level of price. This is going to be cheap, but it's not. It's 2,000 US dollars. So, yeah, it's not super expensive, but it's not cheap at the same time. So for $2,000, what exactly are you getting? It's got to be good wide open. It's got to be semi good wide open. Of course, wide open at f0.85. You can expect it to be a bit soft, but you don't want to be overly soft. You don't want other things like color fringing and crap like that. But we'll just have to find out. So, yes, I'm filming with an X-T3, which means I need to take this lens off and put this lens. It's a manual focusing lens. Obviously, this Fuji lens is pretty good. It's, it's auto focusing. Oh, look at that. Focusing. Focusing speed on that is great. Okay, focusing speed on this is going to be bad because of manual focus. But anyway, let's stop recording and let's put this lens on that. Okay, let's try this out. This is at f2.8 just to give you an idea of what it's like. At, no, actually not f2.8. This is f2. This is at f2 just to give you an idea of what it's like at f2. I was shooting at f2 on the 35mm equivalent just now on the Fujifilm X-T3. But this is now 40mm equivalent is 60mm. So it's quite tight. I've sat back a little bit because otherwise it's just going to be all face. The whole frame of my face. And now I don't think we need that much light. This is at f1.4. That's what the background looks like. Oh, look, is it is it nice and smooth and bokehish? I don't know if I'm actually soft or... <laughs> is it all bokeh? I think it's still going to be pretty good at f1.4. Yeah, of course. You buy an f0.85 lens to have it at f1. No, we don't. No, but this is at f1 anyway. That's that's what the bookshelf bokeh looks like. Is it glorious? Is it cheesy licious? Somewhere around here is closest focusing distance, 75 centimeters, which is quite close. I mean, Noctilux doesn't focus that close, but you know, what does it look like? Focusing on this is a bit of a pain in the ass. At f085, you can't expect that really. I mean, when you're looking through the viewfinder or LCD screen, the peaking may be flashing, but it doesn't necessarily mean the bit you want in focus is actually in focus. I mean, when we're talking about f085, that plane of focus, that the stuff that's actually in focus is incredibly shallow. It's, it's wafer thin. It's like just one slight movement. That's it. Out of focus. Huge pain in the ass. Which is why I've got this on the Atomos Ninja V5, whatever. Hashtag not an ad. Use whatever external monitor you want. Small HD, whatever, black magic, whatever works. I can also see I've got this wide open now, and yeah, it's it's soft. <laughs> it's soft like baby poo. I was right, mushy baby poo. You can tell you can tell I'm a dad. I can see a slight hint of color fringing. When I say slight, I mean a crap ton of color fringing. You know what? The the burger is actually pretty good. It's pretty nice. You could say it's both delicious. No, I can't say that. It's copyrighted, apparently. It's bokeh, bokeh quite tasty delicious. okay? I wouldn't say it's got a huge bundle of character. It's not like Helios lens. It's not swirly bokeh. It's quite restrained, but the, the balls look good. My balls are looking pretty smooth. 
Right, let's stop this down to F1. Yeah, looks kind of samey, similar, samey. Yeah, I mean, they're not a huge improvement. I don't know why I'm cocking my head like this. It's F1.4, F2. Although it gains a bit of actual sharpness at F2, the softness and colour fringing wide open can be annoying for colour photos. It looks more acceptable for black and white work, and for video, I think it lends a nice old film kind of look to it. And a bulk here is pretty damn tasty. It's not going to be a lens for everyday use, but a 14mm f0.85 was never going to fulfil that role anyway. It's probably not going to be for everyone, but if you're going to spend 2k on a big rose bokeh machine, all credit to you. We want to see the bokeh. 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 There we are. Thanks for watching this episode of Photo Kina Special. It's been good seeing you, Cologne. Look, it's Cologne over there. Cologne in the background. Yeah, lovely. Cologne on my neck as well. Whatever. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And please tickle that like button if this video has been useful in any way. And if not, then sorry. I'll try harder next time right <laughs>